When the cyclohexane molecule undergoes a conformational change, we call it a ring flip. Ring flip is just, again, our way of referring to the conformational change that cyclohexane undergoes. And I want you to use your model. We're going to, I'm going to attempt to walk you through visualizing the the ring flip conformational change that cyclohexane undergoes. So I want you to start by building a model of just the carbon atoms of cyclohexane. And if you're continuing from the last video where I showed you how to draw a chair conformation, what I'm going to ask you to do here is is just rebuild that model of the six carbons. If you put hydrogens on, take them off because it's easier to see with no hydrogens. So I want you to put your six carbon atoms together like this, um, looking down on it. And it's important that you have the, the cyclohexane molecule oriented in this particular position with points on the left and the right. And then I want you to take that model and just turn it so that from your viewing perspective, you're looking at the chair conformation with the carbon on the left-hand side pointed down and the carbon on the right-hand side pointed up. And we're going to, we're gonna draw that particular perspective over here on the side. And we're only gonna be drawing the carbon atom. So this is gonna be line notation for the cyclohexane. So in this video, at this time, we're not gonna be worrying about the carbons, or excuse me, the hydrogens. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and, and number these carbons in the ring. And these numbers are pretty much arbitrary, but it's just gonna help us keep track of them. So what I want you to do with your model is to take carbon number six, so this carbon right here, and I want you to push that carbon up into this position, just push it up. And I want you to not rearrange the other five carbons in the ring, although they might get a little bit contorted or twisted. I want you to just take this carbon and push it up. And when you do that, your molecule is going to change shape and it should look something like this where carbon number six is now up here and this is one two three four five this particular conformation of cyclohexane is called the boat conformation, whereas we talked in the last video about how this is the chair conformation. The boat conformation is not as stable as a chair conformation, primarily because on carbons six and three, you've got hydrogens that are sterically hindered interacting with each other. But the boat conformation is helpful for us to visualize what's going to happen next. So what I want you to do next is grab carbon number three, which is this guy right here, and I want you to push it down into this spot. And if you do that successfully, you will end up with another chair conformation. Which I have a really hard I have a really hard time drawing chairs in this particular direction, I don't know why. So now carbon number six is uh, pointing up and carbon number three is pointing down. And uh, when, when we are comparing the two chair conformations to each other, just comparing these two, we can see that carbons one and two and four and five have pretty much stayed the same. When I've, as I've redrawn this, I've, I've uh, lost the slant to my bond here. But carbons one and two and four and five are still, you know, directly in front of us in in a side to side orientation. Carbon six has gone from down to pointing up, and carbon three has gone from up to pointing down. So this is what we refer to as the ring flip. 
Now we're going to, we're going to expand on this ring flip idea. And what I want you to do is go back. This is tricky. Go back to your original ring. And I'm going to redraw it. And this time we're going to fill in the hydrogen atoms in our drawing. So I'm gonna renumber the carbons again to, oops, so that we can all keep track of, of our carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six. And with your model, what I want you to do is put some of the hydrogen atoms on the car on the on the carbons, not all of them, just some of them. So what we're going to do is fill in only the axial hydrogen atoms. So go around your model and also on our drawing and we're going to fill in one, only one hydrogen for every single carbon, and it's going to be the axial hydrogen. So that means that these equatorial hydrogens, we're not gonna add them to our drawing yet, and I don't want you to put them on your model either. So as you're building this, I want you to have it built so that it, so that it matches this drawing as much as possible. And now what we're going to do, and this is going to be tricky, we're going to ring flip this guy and I'm not going to draw the boat confirmation. We're going to go straight to the second chair confirmation. So that means that you need to grab hydrogen number six and push it up. And once you get it pushed up, you need, or I think I said hydrogen, grab carbon number six and push it up. And once you get it pushed up, I want you to grab carbon number three and push it down. So we're ring flipping. And I'm going to attempt to draw a nice chair conformation over here. And I'm drawing it in the direction that is my weakness. So here is our new chair conformation. This is our ring flipped. Let's start by keeping track of where our carbons are. So carbon number six, which is on the left-hand point, is still on the left-hand point. Carbon number six is over here. Here's one, two, three, four, five. And now I want you to take a look at your hydrogen atoms. When you ring flipped, I want you to take a look at where they went. So your hydrogen atom, let's, let's start by focusing on carbon number six, because that's gonna be an easy one to see right here. The hydrogen atom on carbon number six in your model should no longer be straight down, axial. In fact, none of your hydrogens should be axial at all anymore. The hydrogens should have all shifted from the axial position to the equatorial position, all of them. So hydrogen number six, instead of being axial sticking down, it should now be equatorial and sticking down. Don't quite have enough room there. So it should be equatorial, but still sticking down. And let's now let's take a look at carbon number one and its hydrogen should no longer be axial and sticking up, but instead it should be equatorial and sticking up. And then for carbon number two, its hydrogen should no longer be axial, it should be equatorial, but still down. And as we continue around the ring, hopefully you're starting to see this trend that all of our hydrogens, when, they, when we underwent a ring flip, they all switched from an axial position to an equatorial position, all of them. But the hydrogens that were sticking down, carbons six, two, and four, their hydrogens continued to be sticking down. So they stayed in the down position. They just shifted from axial to equatorial. And then the same with um, our, oops, with our hydrogens on one, three, and five. They stayed pointing up, but they shifted from axial to equatorial. So now we are going to try to expand on this a little bit more. And if you're feeling up to it, go ahead and put the rest of the hydrogens on your model. Now, it's probably going to be helpful for you to visualize 
if when you're adding the rest of the hydrogens on your model, if you make them a different color. So if you made these hydrogens white and all of them are white on your model, then come through, when you come through again and put the other hydrogen on, make it a different color. And they don't all have to be the same color because depending on your model kit, you may not have enough of a second or a third color to make all of these the same color, but just make them a different color from the, the six hydrogen that you put on originally so that you can keep track of them so you can see them. So now we have the last set of hydrogens on our model and these hydrogens all went into axial positions because that's what was available. So they all went axial up, down, up, down, up, and down. So now what I want you to do is try to ring flip back to the original structure. So to do that, you're gonna grab carbon number six and you're gonna push it down. Grab carbon number three and push it up. So that will give us back to the original chair conformation and watch what happens to those purple hydrogen or the new hydrogen that you've added as you undergo the ring flip. So starting with carbon number six, our purple hydrogen, which is sticking straight up, is now going to be in an equatorial position, but still sticking up. Carbon number one, which has purple hydrogen sticking down when we ring flip it, will now be equatorial down. And this will continue around the ring, giving us this pattern. So we've got two patterns. One that we talked about in the last video when we build a cyclohexane in the chair conformation, our hydrogen atoms alternate axial up, axial down, axial up, axial down, equatorial down, equatorial up, equatorial down, equatorial up. That's one pattern that's very important. The other pattern that we're observing in this, hopefully that you're able to visualize, is that when cyclohexane undergoes a ring flip, when cyclohexane ring flips, the substituents, we're just focusing on hydrogens in this video, but it could be anything, the substituents will change from an axial position to equatorial position or vice versa, depending on what they start with. But their direction doesn't change. So the up substituent will stay up and the down substituent stays down.